thank you for your patience. I apologize for starting late. You know, by rule, we cannot conduct a meeting without a quorum. And so now that we have four commissioners before you, we can go forward with our meeting. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Can everyone hear, hear me in the back as well? Great. Um, Mr. Fields has circulated to the commissioners the meeting minutes uh, that were conducted at our special meeting on September 18th and also our regularly scheduled meeting on September 27th. Um, I noted in one section for the September 27th 2018 minutes um, a summary concerning uh, the application of Mr. Beasley that I wanted to make sure was clear. Uh, that was the only thing I saw in the minutes. Um, and um, I may need some help remembering the details regarding his application. But my memory, according to my memory, we actually approved Mr. Beasley and then there was a motion to reconsider which we, we, which we did and then there was a motion to um, deny his application which was approved 3-0 and I don't know if I actually voted to cause a tie. I know there was a discussion in which I asked if I could vote after the vote had been taken. Um, I just I think the minutes probably should reflect that. Okay, we can we can I'll work with legal or review the video to make sure that it's clear. Cause okay. If, if it was it was challenging, we were trying to summarize it. Right. But, so we can we can do that and give it to you <coughs> as an ad, as an addendum in November. Okay. Make a motion to approve the September 18th, 2018 minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, do we want to just defer approval of the September 27th meeting minutes until next month, or is I that going to? I, I don't. I think that's fine. All right, the first item on our agenda today is under taxi cabs. We have a driver application for drivers Addis, uh, Gibber Hawat, and Abdil Nazir Getty. Mr. Fields. Mr. Getty, <coughs> in making his application, Mr. Gaddy had uh, failed to list a uh, trespassing charge they had in 2018. Mr. Gaddy has been a cab driver uh, <coughs> previously, uh, but again in his application he failed to list the 2018 uh, trespassing charge. He said Gaddy? Uh-huh. Yeah, Gaddy. I'm, I'm sorry. Addis, Mr. Gaddy, if you'll take we'll be right, I apologize. I was reading from Mr. Uh, Gabby Nasir's uh, uh, application. I apologize for that. In failing 2018 trespassing charge, again, he has been a cab driver previously. You said he was a cab driver before. And he had, he had, he had been a cab flat. driver. His... Uh, Mr. Gaddy, what was the last time you 
held a permit. You had a, you, we were renewing your permit this year. Yeah. Uh, and what had happened, we were renewing your permit, and when you made the application, the new application, you just failed to list this on, because you missed the class, and you had to go to class after the fact. Yes, sir. If you fail to go to class, so so the situation was he just neglected. It's my understanding that particular charge was dismissed, but I have, we have him here to be able to answer that. Yeah, I do note that the Metro uh, website docket sheet here says that the case was dismissed at the request of the state mm -hmm. on July 6, 2018. And as we've seen, sometimes that causes confusion for applicants. Why'd you forget to put that on your application? I, I, I was rushing doing an application. I was an honest mistake, sir, and I apologize for that. Oh, we're talking about Mr. Geber Hawat. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. What's the uh, disposition of the arrest? Has it been resolved? Criminal Which trespass? The criminal trespass charge? Dismissed. Dismissed? Yes, yeah, sir. Right here. Okay. You were saying it was dismissed by the okay. state. So At the request of the state. Okay. Well, I, I've got a question, though, it, and I may be misreading this, but the taxi cab driver application. I'm looking at page two. It says list each offense, federal, state, whatever, and I don't see anything down there. Because he was a renewing driver, all of the other information is on record okay. at the previous application. The only thing they would do if they if they go through a year and they fail to renew their permit, what we require them to do is to set out. They have to attend a new class. They have to get new fingerprints. Okay. So what we would have done is reviewed the record to make sure everything else previously had already been on a previous application. It was with the exception of the trespass. So the previous controlled substance charges, tampering with evidence, uh, suspended driver's license, or, or right. no, another charge of possession, all those were previously known they, yes, they, on his uh, application. In the, from all those were 2010 previous, and mm -hmm. so, and they were all in the record. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Gip Rohiawat. Yes, sir. That's close enough. <laughs> well, why don't you pronounce it for me, please? Gerberwat. Gerberwat. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve Mr. Gerberwat's uh, application. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, I can't speak English. Now, Mr. Gibb. Now we got some more. Mr. Gaddy also had been a, has been a cab driver previously. In making his application this year, however, he neglected to uh, uh, list a, in, in, this was actually in 2016, so this was in, in a, he would have failed to list it last year when he renewed. When we did his fingerprints this year because he didn't renew on time, the 2016 assault charge appeared uh, on his record. <coughs> and it was, he, he had not previously disclosed it. And I note that it's a domestic assault. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding it was also dismissed. <coughs> Why didn't you put it on your application? Sir, I never know about that one. That thinks the case was uh, uh, me and my wife little argument for something, so the case was dismissed, and I never know that was on my record, on <coughs> coming on my fingerprint, and that's why I didn't mention my tour application. Even when I take now, just now I take my citizen in uh, March on 2018, uh, this year, uh, they didn't ask me about that one, so I never know that one on my system while it was dismissive, so that's why I don't mention my application. You didn't know it was dismissed, or you did know it was dismissed? I know it was dismissed. Even and that's why you didn't put it on your application? Yeah, I thought if dismissed, no need to uh, 
fill the application. That's why I, I, didn't, I, I didn't fill that one. Mr. Fields, how did we verify that it was dismissed? We would, what we normally would do, and I'm not sure why I didn't put a copy here with you, we'd go to the Metro, in this particular case, it's a Davidson County charge. We would yeah. go to the criminal court clerk's records and checked it. And I'm not sure why that copy was not attached. It's probably sitting on my desk, to be really honest with you. But, but you're certain that it was dismissed? I, without looking at it, you know, I'd actually try to verify it again and could not get on the website from this room. But um, if you want to give him a conditional, if you want to give him a conditional approval, we'll verify it. If not, we'll bring him back. Obviously, if he's got a conviction, that'd be, it'd be disqualifying anyway. But. That's reason I'm reasonably that's sure. That's why I want to make sure. <laughs> oh, oh, I, that's the reason I would have checked it, and I'm not sure why the copy of the of the criminal court clerk's records is not there. We had a few other complaints this month as we did last month, so it's been a little hectic in the office with all of our complaints. Mr. Getty, are you ready to start driving for somebody as soon as this is approved? Uh, can you repeat for me that question, sir? Do you have a taxi cab company ready to hire you if this is approved? Yeah, deal? yeah, same my company, yeah, Texas Taxi USA. Okay. And you are telling us right now that this charge of assault was dismissed? Yes, sir. Well, <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Getty's applications on the condition that the assault charge was dismissed, and I'll take it upon myself to check as well. And Mr. Fields, if you'll check your office as well, we'll make sure. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you so Mr. Getty. Much. Next, we have a request under Rucker and Towing Services to add Michael Martin and John Martin as owners of Bailey's Martins and Mike's Custom Towing. Mr. Fields. We do have representatives of the, of the Martins here today. I, I, I want to say this because I want to make sure I say it the right way. I'm sorry that we have to make this particular, uh, ask you to do this particular action today. Mike Martin was one of the uh, good guys in the towing business. He died uh, a few years back. His wife inherited it as well as his sons. One of his other sons is not with us either, and I'm regretful of that. But uh, the terms of his will and his estate had it uh, where uh, – his son, uh, Michael Martin and John Martin, would become owners of the company along with his wife. And uh, the estate is in the situation of selling, uh, of settling. It's my understanding under state law that they are, that they are by law the now owners of the company. So it would be appropriate for the commission to acknowledge it and allow them, their names <coughs> to be a part of the uh, application. And just as a special gift. Mr. Blackburn has represented the estate and is present. He didn't know it was on the agenda, but he's available if need be. It's not unlike we did with Carter's uh, record company about three years ago when Mr. Carter passed away. And so the actual request is to add Michael Martin and John Martin as owners of Bailey slash Martins and Mike's custom towing. Correct. Make a motion to approve the name change or to add Michael Martin and John Martin as owners of Bailey slash Martins and Mike's custom towing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next. Thank you all. Sorry. Next, we have a review uh, of a non consent towing application for lightning and recovery. Lightning Towing Recovery and their owners present. Um, the uh, rules require that a company be in business more than a year uh, and not have any problems. They Lightning has been in business more than a year. We've not had any issues with them. Uh, they meet the qualifications to do uh, non-consent towing. Any reason not to approve it, Mr. Fields? Not that I'm aware of. Make a motion to approve uh, non-consent towing application for Lightning and Recovery. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a driver application for Randall uh, Moynihan. Mr. Moynihan, Mr. Moynihan, are you present? Mr. Moynihan has uh, he's been deferred twice. Make a motion to uh, 
deny the, re the review or the request. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is under low speed vehicles. We have a driver application for Alexander Tesiros. Mr. Oh, here he comes. In making his application, um, I do want to verify exactly who's worked for. There was a little bit of confusion whether it was Joyride or Music City Touring, but it's Joyride. Mm -hmm. It's Music, Music City, City Touring. Touring. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Mr. Ross here. In making his application, uh, he failed to disclose some charges of 2017 uh, domestic assault, the 96 burglary, the 2002 assault, and uh, a driver's license charge several years before that. He was deferred from September and is present today. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Fields, what were the years of those? 2017, there was a... Uh, Domestic assault. Yeah, a, uh, domestic assault, and he did not list that. Then in '96, there was a burglary charge that was not listed. I'm just double checking as we go. Uh, 2002, assault of a child. A, um, a, a one more. There was a probation violation, but that was in like Mr. Tassiris, why didn't you disclose the 2017 domestic assault charge? Uh, that was, I had spoken with my lawyer, and I was just misunderstanding that it was dismissed and expunged, and I did not realize that I was, he, he said I wasn't obligated to put that on there. He didn't believe that it would show up, which was and very. That's the challenging part is it's clearly there. It's, it's, he wasn't convicted, but it's here. Yeah, I just, I didn't understand the directions, that's all. So it was it dismissed? At and, and expunged. And, oh, sorry, he did just say that. What about the earlier um, charges of burglary, burglary in 96? Uh, that I literally forgot about. I did not understand that I could have just gotten my background check printed out. I was doing it clearly off of memory the first, when I went in. Were you convicted of the burglary? No, no. What was the outcome of the burglary? Oh, I was in college. I was playing baseball, and it was... What was the outcome? It was dismissed and expunged. <coughs> that also was expunged in Wilson County. Where's new uh, Hanover? Uh, that's in North Carolina. That I also literally forgot about. It was just a misunderstanding with a client at a music studio. And she never showed up for court ever. And then it finally was thrown out of court. Well, so that's probably the assault on a female, right? That's, yeah. She. What's the assault on a child then, under uh, 12? Her child came in and started peeing on the floor in my studio. And all I did was pick up the child and move him set her outside and then she tried to turn it into a whole you know domestic thing and she never showed up for court it was dismissed she never even showed up and I literally once again tried to do it off memory
the burglary in 96, did you say was in Wilson County, Tennessee? Yeah, Wilson County, Lebanon. I went to Cumberland, played baseball for Cumberland University. Were you from Wilmington? No, no, I'm from Ohio. So you actually conferred with your attorney who advised you that you didn't have to put down the... Uh, yeah, I, I... Oh, hold on. You didn't have to put down the 2017 domestic violence because it had been dismissed and expunged. Yeah, he represented me once again, showed up for court, uh, was completely dismissed. What about the 2014 public intoxication disorderly conduct? Were those listed? Uh, yeah, I believe I did list those. You got those? Yeah, I do remember that. I was at a football game. They told me I had to leave, which I didn't agree with, and then they arrested me. Which I spent a thousand dollars to go to the game. And I'm from Cleveland. We obviously have a lot of different policies in our stadiums in Tennessee. I see the public intoxication listed for 2013, but I didn't see the disorderly either. And that may just be the date. I was trying to do that by memory. I think he actually said that 2014. Yeah, I just put the wrong date. He's just mentioning to me I did pedicab for about five years before you guys even issued licenses. And I think part of that, I didn't understand when I, when I went in the first, I actually did it twice. And the first time I went in, I was just, like I said, I was just standing at the counter doing it by memory. Yeah. Did had not you, realize. Had you shared that with us that you'd been a driver before, it's possible that this record would have actually already been on the record. You clearly said you had never had a permit from our office before. Yeah, I, when I was pedicabbing, it was 2007, 2008. Oh, you were doing before you were, it was license. Yeah, okay. there was no license. Uh, literally right about, it was probably like 2013 was the last time, 2012 was the last time I remember working okay. with Nashville Pedicab. Before that, I worked for Nashville Bike Taxi, yeah. which isn't even a company anymore. So. I, I was the, one of the first drivers for Nashville Bike Taxi, so we only had three. They were like red, red pedicab. I don't see it either. I don't know if you remember those. That was one of the drivers. That's him right there, right? Yeah. What about the no driver's license from 2016? You didn't list that on your application. Uh, that that was I was on a bicycle. I was delivering by, uh, for Jimmy John's, so I was actually not even in my car. I was on a bicycle. That's the same as the. Uh, so that's a November thirtieth, two thousand sixteen. No, that's emerged. that's that's a, you say that, you that on was a on my bicycle as well. Yeah, that was I was on Broadway. I don't believe I did anything wrong. Here, he here's my question. Wrote me a you ticket. were charged in a case on April 4, 2016 with no driver's license. It was dismissed, but it's not listed on your application. Why not? Once again, I just didn't remember it. I was trying to do this by memory. That was on a bicycle On the same well. day, April 4, 2016, I don't even know what this charge is, but it's ROT period violation. That was, it was all on my bicycle. I, Literally, they I was, charged you with no driver's license on your bicycle. They did. I was walking. The, the police downtown on the motorcycles seemed to harass the Jimmy John's delivery guys a lot. And that day, I was literally walking my bicycle through a crosswalk. All right, so what is this other charge? Which was actually green. What is this other charge, along with the no driver's license that they charge you for that's abbreviated? I was, walking, I was walking through a crosswalk carrying my bike. And he tried to tell me I was making an illegal turn. I mean, I was literally walking on my bike. I went to court and actually showed up and paid $249 to appeal that and got it dismissed. And there was like, 
he gave me it was at Lafayette and Sixth Avenue, and he gave me illegal turn and somehow running a red light all at the same time, which I still don't understand. And I wasn't even riding the bike. I was actually holding my bicycle and walking it. So. I'd like to see the warrant where an officer charges no driver's license for someone on a bicycle. Something doesn't, doesn't mesh right there. It was very inconvenient. And in fact, it took him like 45 minutes. To, I was sitting there for 45 minutes. I actually had other food with me that all got lost because of it. And Would anyone like to make a motion regarding Mr. Tassiris' application? Is there any discussion about it in regards to why we're quiet so far? So you were, Adam, sorry, you were saying that you've never heard of somebody being given I, a ticket or warrant for no license on a bike? I've never heard of, a, I've never <coughs> seen a person charged with no driver's license for operating a bicycle. I will, I will say, and that's why I said I'd like to see the warrant, but I don't want to hold this up on that. I will say both cases, which were not reported in your application for April 6, April 4, 2016, and those cases were no driver's license and then something that's abbreviated as ROT violation, were not on your application, but they were both dismissed, and they are certainly relatively minor charges. It looks like he may have disclosed something in that regard in, on his, illegal turn, yeah. in March 2016 on a bicycle, illegal turn, failure to stop, both charges dismissed. Um, yeah, I did, I did apply it twice. So the first time I applied was, was uh, 2-23-2018, and then I applied on the second time. And the second time, I'm pretty sure I disclosed everything except for the 2002 incident, which I forgot about. So. And you got your employer here with you? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the application for Mr. Chiros. 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 How do you pronounce it? Uh, Chiros. It's Chiros. Greek. Greek. Yeah. Right. I'll like make a, a motion to approve yeah. Mr. Chiros' application. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Chiros, you may want to speak with your attorney because clearly you've got things on your record that you were advised they're not. Well, I think it was just, just like I said, a misunderstanding. Just speak to your attorney. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main thing because it's on, it's on your record. You're fine here. Yeah. If something's expunged, apparently it still can be found on a background check. That's what I found out. Mr. Chiros, the application asked for you to list even expunged offenses. Yeah, I, I apologize. I literally, I did it fast. I wasn't reading carefully. I just want to make it clear. It yeah. does say to include expunged offenses. Yeah, I apologize. Because we are finding out about it. Right, right. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, didn't follow directions very well. I, I, sorry. Yeah. 
Next item on our agenda is under other passenger vehicles for hire. We have a request to review the application of Bakari USA to add Jennifer Bakari as a partner. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. <coughs> Ms. Bakari is married to Mr. Bakari uh, and has been in management with the company for several years and they've asked that she be added to the uh, application and in order for if any time there's a change of the application the commission has to approve it it's in order I'll make a motion to approve um, Jennifer Bakari being added as a partner to Bakari USA I'll second all those in favor aye, aye. motion passes we also have a driver application for an other passenger vehicle for hire for Saeed Ahmad. Yes. In making his application, Mr. Ahmad neglected to list a 1997 uh, hit and run charge. What was the disposition of the 97 hit and run? Uh, so it was uh, like failed to give information and the aid. You know, the accident happened and uh, I was injured. There was 16 stitches in my head. So I lose my mind and you know, like I have a friend. So we went to the hospital. <coughs> then I came back, turned myself into the police. So that's what happened and I fill up the application for OBVH and um, it was like 1997, very, very long time. And actually I was living in New York, I just moved here. So in New York, you know, they just do everything by themselves. We don't put everything. And I was focusing on major main traffic violations. So it was very long time, I, it was out of my sight. I forget to put it on my application and uh, I'm sorry for this the original charge appears to have been reduced to uh, uh, reduce now failure to give information to aid personal injury mm -hmm. looks like you did 45 days and we're on probation for 18 months just like uh, it was uh, you know like uh, like you know there was no probation like there was nothing I was just uh, they put it in the papers because you know like I was in North Carolina two years when I come to United States and then I was in uh, New York and when I the, the my I have a lawyer so they did everything I didn't go to a like a supervision or probation or any jail something like this they just did everything it was in between court and the lawyers so that's what uh, is on the paper and uh, you know it was very long time that's why i was not remembering or uh, in my mind make a motion for mr ahmad's uh, application second all those in favor aye thank you motion passes thank you very much next we have several company applications for other passenger vehicles for hire uh, c nashville limo llc diamond limousine Luxury Ride Nashville Inc., MC Transportation Company, and Shua Limo. Mr. Fields. All of their applications, which have to appear, uh, have to be considered by the commission, all are in order. Can we vote to approve them both? And just list them all mm -hmm. individually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I would make a motion to approve the company applications for C Nashville Limo LLC. Diamond Limousine, Luxury Ride Nashville Inc., MC Transportation Company, and Sheila Limo. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item is under horse drawn carriages. We've been asked to review Sugar Creek carriages rate change request. This does not require action by the commission. It did require uh, reporting the rates. To my knowledge, this is the first report change we've had in years, at least that I recall. Um, and so it just needed to be reported and placed in the record. Next item, uh, we have uh, several complaints uh, and disciplinary issues, uh, all regarding horse-drawn carriages. Um, 
we've got seven. Uh, they've been organized into seven groupings. I'm, I've been told by Mr. Blackburn uh, that the complaint um, and I'm sure the parties will correct me if I misstate this, but that the complaint from Paul Morrison against Sugar Creek has been withdrawn and that the complaints from Kama Zuniga against Cumberland Carriages, Southern Comfort Carriages, Amer American Melody Carriages, and Jesse Mondel have also been withdrawn. That is that wrong. They have not been withdrawn. Jesse Mondel is being removed. I thought that's the way you were putting that. Mm -hmm. well, I guess I misunderstood. What I All right. Um, we'll take the um, complaint from Nashville Anim Animal Advocacy first against American Melody Carriages. As you recall, Mr. Chairman, there had been Mr. Highland, who represents American Melody Carriages, had a medical issue, a family medical issue that came up the day before yesterday. Uh, they had already had deferrals. Unfortunately, uh, again, I guess I'm a softy when it comes to family illness and when wives are involved. Um, I also spoke with the National Animal Advocacy folks. They're happy to come back and uh, deal. They had two complaints today. They'd like to go ahead and do both in uh, in August, not August, in November. Okay. All right. August. <laughs> or August next year. Do you need a motion sorry. or? I'm sorry. Do we need a motion or just go ahead uh, and defer? You could, you could defer, you could make a motion to defer those. I'll make a motion to defer Nashville Animal Advocacy's complaint against American Melody Carriages and is that also the Tina Doherty? Well, defer the first one till uh, the next meeting. A second. All right, and all right, so now we have complaints from Deborah Cox against Jesse Bennett, Jesse Monville, and Kenny Hale. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I see where the confusion was. There, the those that have to do with Jesse Monville. There's two of those. Those were the two that I indicated to be removed. The first one is Laurie Lancaster against Jesse Monville. That's withdrawn. And my misunderstanding was was that only the part that men mentioned Jesse Monville would be removed from the latter part. Okay. Yes. The police, the commission, I'm Helen Rogers. Um, many of you don't know me. I was chair of the commission for five years, so I haven't been back since. Why well, change our heads? Uh, my objection to these two complaints is that we're still within the 60 day tertiary period, and the request is for discipline against uh, my client, Sugar Creek went for these complaints. In other words, the requested solution is they want discipline imposed on the company now that the drivers have been felt found guilty. Well, that hasn't reached its time period where it's a final finding. And so I would say this is premature and should be put on an agenda after any risk or possibilities of writ of surgery are passed. Thank you. Well, if I may respond to that, we had a number that had <coughs> been filed previously that uh, did not have the correct uh, ordinance citation on them because uh, they, didn't, they weren't directed at the companies themselves. And so uh, the commission asked that these uh, <coughs> complainers amend these and refile them, and so they did. That's how this, this came about. Um, the, uh, uh, it is true that there is a 60-day period within which uh, something can be uh, appealed. However, that appeal suspends the uh, action of the commission during the pendency of the appeal. I'm not aware of any law or regulation that says that because 
a driver has been found guilty of an offense, uh, the owner of the company somehow has, by default, a 60-day window in which uh, everything is suspended against that entity simply because two employees have a, an as yet unperfected right to appeal. I think this is apples and oranges. I don't believe that's correct. I, I um, well, Mr. Blackburn, we, um, we did hear these complaints already, and we uh, found that Ms. Monville and Mr. Hale were in violation of the um, ordinance. Um, and so we, we have ruled on these complaints. So I, when I first read um, these amended complaints, I, I actually was reading them as, you know, standalone new complaints. I didn't realize that they were for the exact same allegations that were originally brought. Um, I tend to agree with Ms. Rogers that that um, that the complaints ought to be dismissed if you're bringing the same exact allegations that we've already ruled on now against Southern Comfort. Well, the difference is, I understand what you're saying. The difference is, <clears throat> these were not brought and not heard before this commission on any complaint involving Southern Comfort. If you have drivers, uh, take it outside the carriage business. If you have taxi drivers who are charged with and convicted of felonies, then despite the fact that those charges have been adjudicated and the permits of those individuals withdrawn does not mean that that cannot uh, result in further discipline against the owner. Uh, and the reason uh, Sugar Creek is sensitive to this is that uh, this is the same section that was used over a year ago to place Sugar Creek on probation, the same ones, with no behavior having to do with Mr. Uh, Smith himself uh, being uh, found with no <coughs> finding of specific uh, offense by him personally about one of these things. So this one, A9, has to do with public safety. The, what the drivers were charged with and found guilty of was picking up passengers outside the carriage stand, which is a safety violation. Um, and they do have, as Ms. Rogers indicates, a right to appeal those. But if you have a practice and custom of a company aware of these, and the owner, I believe, was present when all of this was discussed, uh, then the company itself uh, can, under this particular section, uh, be uh, uh, found guilty of the same, not the same offense because that applies to the, to the drivers, but can be found guilty of the violation that is alleged here. Every violation that was before the commission that where there was some effort to say the company was liable, uh, the uh, complaining witnesses were instructed that they had 30 days to file an amended complaint regarding the company naming the correct and separate code section. And that's what they did. Um, you know, one thing that's never been really fully vetted here is whether there's kind of a respondeat superior relationship when it comes to these. It would in a tort context, of course. Uh, is the company responsible for the uh, behavior of its drivers? I'm not sure that's been... In that same kind of question we're asking about with uh, the slow-moving vehicles, joyride, when they have uh, drivers who we have found to be in violation and then uh, the company officer comes down here and we're putting the company on probation for something the driver did because we think the company's aware. So we, ha we have been exploring that issue. It's not, you know. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I've had a, a, an unfortunate number of appearances here <laughs> in the carriage business. I don't remember that being applied in the carriage business, but uh, I do seem to recall some discussion about that in the Pedal Tavern uh, context. There are a couple of things about this issue. Uh, first of all, uh, Ms. these complaints, as you can all see, are have already been before the commission. If they wanted to bring action against 
uh, Mr. Morrison and Southern Comfort, they could have at the same time said, these employees have done this. We also think there's a pattern of conduct, but they didn't do that. So if, they, if you allow it to go forward in this manner, then every time you have an individual, then you can have this same argument heard a second time by the commission. Secondly, I really think you all were wrong. Unfortunately, I wasn't here last time, and it, you know, an attorney can't help a client until they're retained. But there's nowhere in the regulations that say you can only pick up at a stand. I've read through them several times. Um, the stands are there to stage for convenience, to show here's where the carriages are, but it, the statute itself says on any public road that they're allowed to operate where there's less than 35 mile an hour. It, it, the commission, I think, was wrong, and we'll take this up in chancery court, but to re-litigate complaints that you've already heard, that the proof has been in, and against now the owner, and actually, uh, Mr. Blackburn tells you the real crux of this when he says this is exactly why Sugar Creek was suspended. Well, Sugar Creek was suspended. That was upheld in the court process. And these complaints, the reason your agenda is full of these complaints is retaliation. This side of the, the group is angry at the other side of the group. That, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. In the five years that I was here, the taxi cabs got along pretty well, the record service got along great, and the carriage people were problematic. And most of the problems came from one specific group. And so we've got the same thing going on here. You gotta put some reasonable curbs on this situation, or you're going to be what, what kind of reasonable curbs are you offering here? Well, I'm suggesting. saying give me a time until the writ of certiorari is passed. Well, I, I was litigate. hoping you were going to give some suggestions and oh, how we could curb these. I, uh, I've got some suggestions. Maybe put in. Complaints. Yeah, maybe put in some some kind of teeth to it, of if there have been X number of false allegations. Because look at what you got. What's on your agenda? There oh, is no, a, just follow with what you were making yeah, a suggestion of. Put, put some teeth. Put into some what? kind of of penalty of if one company makes you know, more than five allegations against another company in a year that, that are found n invalid, that company is subject to suspension or to punishment or something. Because this is, this is out of control. I mean, this is literally out of control situation. And, uh, you know, there's, it almost reminds me of sort of the Chicago mob of we're just gonna run everybody out of business because we're the only people. And now we've got the animal activists wanting to just get rid of carriages I thought it was reminding me of divorce court of exes going back and forth. Uh, well, I'm good with that in, too. In spite, and, and I thought maybe you were going to bring some of that experience in here for some suggestions. Well, I, I'm I'm pretty good at those those situations too, and and, and at grudge matches. But I th I think you've got to, you know, when it's not a customer making a complaint, which is what we typically had in this before this current era. Sugar Creek has never had. Uh, can I please speak without being interrupted? Thank you. Um, there are, where there are cust legitimate customer complaints, that is one thing. When it is strictly competitors complaining about each other, I think this commission has to look at it with, you know, somewhat jaded glasses. Um, I don't know. And, and the other thing is, if you're going to put in restrictions of a stand or areas that they can pick up like you do the taxi cabs, I think you've got to spell it out. There have to be zones. And there isn't. There's this stand where customers know they can get a carriage ride there, but I, I don't think you've got a regulation that you're supposed to be enforcing. Now, you know, that, that's where we are. I, I would just urge you to allow us to file the writ of certiorari on these two before you try to use them against the company. That's all they're doing is basically trying to rehash their last complaints against the company. Thank you. Yeah respond to your, your question. Uh, when I first got into this, we we're trying to, I was trying, looking for ways to try to ameliorate this, uh, this situation, which plainly came, as I mentioned many times, from overcrowding. Uh, I tried to organize a uh, carriage operators uh, uh, group, an organization, so we could build in some sort of ADR into it. 
Sugar Creek agreed to do it. Uh, ben Rabin was very much in favor of it. None of the others would agree to it. Then I suggested uh, that uh, this commission, through its regulatory powers, and I believe you have this authority, could create its own ADR, that you have some means to resolve these so that you don't have to listen to this every, every month. Uh, I understand the problem with that is, is that someone then has to do it. And so that then uh, would impose an additional uh, burden on uh, commissioners or Mr. Fields. So that, uh, that idea was not, uh, was not accepted. Then I suggested that we could have an outside uh, independent security agency employed, and I submitted an application or proposal from a company willing to do it, highly qualified, and suggested a means to pay for that. Uh, this would be an independent contractor of the metropolitan government. Uh, I suggested that, and I submitted the proposed contract, and it's not been on the agenda, and I'm not complaining about that. I can understand a number of reasons why it would not yet have been on this agenda. But that has been, that has been suggested. So what we have now is a criticism of a regulation which is not on your agenda today, uh, and I may agree with my friend Ms. Rogers about that, but it's not been enforced in that way in the three or four years I've been appearing here, and Mr. Fields has advised by email all of these parties that they're supposed to adhere to the carriage stands. They've not done that. Uh, the things that have been alleged have to do with safety issues, uh, with where parties are discharging and picking up passengers and doing this in the travel portion of the roadway. That's plainly within your, within your jurisdiction. Um, but if the, if the drivers are going to, on multiple occasions, violate your rules, whether they're subject to some other attack or not, uh, then eventually it's a company problem. And I would remind you again that you suggested correctly that uh, the particular ordinances that had to do with carriage uh, permits rather than with the owner's permits rather than the individual permits were not properly cited. You asked them to redo them with those regulations cited. I went over these with them and told them which regulations you were referring to and those are the ones that are put here. So they're here in response to your suggestion. Now, is, should we have some larger solution to this? Of course. <laughs> Can we do it today? Probably not. Can, can, I, can I just stop a second or ask you to hold on a second so I make sure I understand what's in front of us right now? And I didn't mean to get us sidetracked with suggestions I think it's just on. The first two complaints. Yeah, we've got Deborah Cox's complaints against Jesse Monvell, Kenny Hale and Jesse, Jesse Bennett. Bennett. And Mr. Blackburn, your, your clients want to go forward with, the with their complaints against the company. They're, Southern actually, Com against, they're actually against Southern, Southern Comfort. Comfort. Yeah, uh, or, or alleging not. against these operators, right? Right, it's the or same complaint, but now hold they're hold trying on, to bring action. Let me, let me yeah. see if I can explain it so I've got it clear sure. in my head. And Mr. Blackburn, your clients want to go forward against Southern Comfort for the complaints of July 21st at 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock in the evening that were found against these individuals already. And Ms. Rogers, your, your client is asking to wait the, till the time to appeal, for lack of a better word, sure. to, to challenge this in a, in a higher court. Yeah, Let, let's okay, look now, at the underlying. Hold on, just wait. Yeah. Is, that, is that what I understand is on the, you're, in front of correct. us today? Your, your request at this point to hold off on these complaints until you make a decision right. whether to appeal or not. Right. So let, let's look at the logic of it. No, I, I'm okay. okay. I, I, okay. I just want to make sure we we understand where we are right now. Okay. So okay. The, the point is also I, I have every intention of filing a writ of certiorari. If I'd had the time, I would have filed When's that due? Well, it's not due for another 30 days. I mean, Okay, I just want to know. It's, yeah. it's, so 30 days to buy and we've got 30 days to go. Okay. Exactly. Mr. Blackburn, one question real quick. Are you alleging anything else besides what's on in, in these two amended complaints dating July 21st to 18th at 8 a.m. and July 21st, 
18 at 7 p.m. These particular two do not allege anything else. It was stated that uh, that uh, conduct was found, they were found guilty of that conduct right. at so a special. July time. to August is one month, August, September is another month. So we're three months past the time of the findings against the individual operators. No, they were found guilty last well, month. Guilty. Last month, but I mean three three yes. months since the time of the incident of which they were found guilty last month. But Correct. these were amended okay. at the request of the commission. I understand, I understand. Just, uh, so my point is, when I file the writ of certiorari, if, let, let's assume this commission finds that Southern Comfort should be somehow sanctioned or found responsible, and then I'm successful in my appeal, then you would have really committed a wrong against the company, and then I have to do a second appeal for the company. That, that, this is just, you know, creating endless litigation. So I think your, your options are, number one, you need to say if you're going to go up against the company and you think these are severe enough that the company should be punished, not just the individual, then you need to allege that in the original complaint. Well, the other side of that is, though, or, if, we, if we hold off against uh, Southern Comfort or considering uh, these complaints against the company, we might be sending the wrong signal that we're not sure about our uh, decision against the individual operators. Well, I understand that, but, so, so but it, there's you know, no... The logic can go either way. But there's no... Um, if they're found guilty on the appeal, you certainly can then consider it. But why would you want to incur multiple violations and multiple recurrences of this? It either should be all at once, or if you're going to have anything against the company, it should only be for things that have been tested in the court. I suppose it would have been preferred to have it all at one time last month, but on the other hand, it didn't happen that way. So. It's also, if you recall, the first time it was up, it just we just ran out of time. Do you see any prejudice to your complainant if we were to grant Ms. Rogers' request to wait 30 days? Well, on, only this. If you wait if you wait 30 days and she files with regard to these two uh, individuals, then she's going to argue that that is somehow a pocket uh, veto, so to speak, a, a way to prevent the, the <coughs> commission from adjudicating those complaints because they're on appeal when, on, when uh, uh, Southern Comfort's uh, charges not even ha have not even been found, much less stayed because of the application in the Chancery Court. Now, on the other hand, there's no harm that can flow to them because if Southern Comfort's case is adjudicated uh, contrary to Southern Comfort, then it can file its own application uh, at the same time and involving the same conduct as the two drivers. And then it stayed by operation of law until the disposition of that, that case. Mr. Blackburn, um, I have a substantive issue with the complaints, which makes me think they ought to be just dismissed on their merit. Uh, and that's because you, while you allege a violation of 1254-070, a9, uh, which states that the commission may place on probation, probation, suspend, revoke a certificate holder if it is determined that the certificate holder um, has engaged in conduct detrimental to the public safety. The bare allegations in the complaints filed by Ms. Cox are, are directed against Kenny Hale, Jesse Monville, and Jesse Bennett. Um, there's no allegation at all of a pattern and practice by S Southern Comfort or a failure to supervise or a failure to maintain uh, proper uh, adherence to our ordinances, anything of the sort. It's just simply like it, the allegation, the bare allegation is because we found Kenny Hale Jesse Monville and Jesse Bennett guilty of the actual violations that are specifically alleged in these complaints that we should therefore find Southern Comfort to be subject to disciplinary action. And that's, that's not enough. If the commission will adopt uh, as a, what would you call it, law of the case? <laughs> if it will simply adopt as a principle 
that a company is not responsible for the conduct of its employees, uh, then uh, I have no problem, Mr. Chairman, with the position you're taking. That's not been done with regard to prior complaints against uh, Sugar Creek and Johnny Smith. Uh, and what we had discussed last time was that there were multiple violations by multiple people, three in this instance. They do involve safety violations. Uh, if you, the watering a horse, for example, in the travel portion of the, of the roadway, uh, if you look at this in any tort context, uh, that employee's negligence would be imputed to the owner or to the employer if the person were acting in the scope and course. Now, if, if all of these in the future uh, need wait, to be wait, stated wait, wait, that wait. way. There would be an exception to that, though, if the, if the employee was acting on their own volition and not under the tacit permission of the owner of the company well, to stop it there. I mean, no, no I'm not, not going to go there because this says very specifically her carriage was loaded with passengers and alleges that it was public safety because of that. It doesn't say that, like we found with your client who was standing there when the uh, incidents were occurring. And in fact, I think I even commented, it looked like he was encouraging it. So I, I'm inclined to agree with the uh, chairperson. This, these are alleging very clearly that these employees may have committed acts that were detrimental to the public safety, but there's nothing there about that respondent superior uh, nexus alleged in the complaints. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to quarrel with you about tort principles because that's not what we're here uh, before, but the question is uh, whether the person is acting in the scope and course of his employment. That would be the legal issue in that in that context. Well, if I'm in the but, but if that's going to be, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think it's a. It's, this is not a tort context, though. This is that's right. A disciplinary complaint for violating 1254.70, and there needs to be allegations that the company has failed in some way to either supervise or. Uh, or encouraged it, yeah. or ha somehow encouraged conduct detrimental to the public safety and again all we have is a bare allegation that the driver of the carriage violated 1254 200 and we found that the, the drivers in fact violated 1254 200 but that that doesn't necessarily impute automatically to if the that company. if that is going to be if that may be placed in the minutes explicitly so that we can rely upon that principle later and I don't have a problem with that well I, I'm not suggesting that you can't bring a complaint and you if you want to allege some kind of pattern or practice and you can rattle off 10 individual complaints you know all uh, in a in a in a relatively short time frame and the company has continually not done the things it needs to do to ensure that this isn't con still happening, then that may be an instance where we would consider bringing um, some kind of disciplinary action against the, the company. I, I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I'll explain that to uh, Mr. Smith, and I think if that's going to be the requirement in the future, I think it's beneficial. I think it's good policy, and we'll adhere to it. I would note that uh, the agenda, even the minutes, though this is not binding nor evidence of any kind, but the way it's styled was review complaints from Deborah Cox against Jesse Bennett, Jesse Munvell, and Kenny Hale. Interesting, it did, didn't notice it was against uh, Southern Comfort. So, and, and I'm not making any complaints, it's just the way you read these complaints, it suggests that it's against these individuals again, which is what we're back to the very beginning. When the, commit, when the chairperson actually said, I thought they were the same things coming before us again. So. Well, I, I can't speak to how the agenda was prepared, but these individuals were directed to amend their complaints right. simply to change the code section, and they did. Uh, and so you can see the one that's before you, the company name here, which is the respondent or defendant or whatever term we use, is Southern Comfort. So I. I, uh, but I understand what you're saying, and uh, 
that could give some clarity and some distinction that we can make in the future about how to separate these things. I think what Mr. Uh, Chairman is saying makes sense, and uh, I don't mind doing that in the future. Uh, and in the future, when there's one like that, uh, you won't have it in handwriting from a carriage operator. I'll do it myself. And I I, because I, I understand what you're saying. And I also recognize that uh, we need to be consistent in our, in our analysis and rulings on these. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. I would make a motion to review or to dismiss the complaints by Deborah Cox against Southern Company. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, um, do you mean the individual drivers or? They were, they're actually, no, they were, they were complaints against Southern Comfort. They were not against the individual drivers. Okay. Yes, sir. The, they were already ruled on against the individual mm -hmm. drivers. Mm -hmm. I understand. I'm good. Thank you. The next one is Melody. She's not here. Right. Um, make it any clearer? Yeah, I'm, I want to make sure I, there's not an issue with the way we've ruled with our director. Oh, um, no, I, I'm, I'm fine. I just wanted to make sure that I had the proper verbiage. Okay. Ms. Rogers, there's no confusion about what we dismissed here today, right? No, you are. Oh, you are. Right. <laughs> I, <wanna say> <laughs> <laughs> I, I did want to make one little small point. Notice is the other issue yes. of reason why this has to not be successful against Southern Comfort is there was not notice against the company. <coughs> there was notice of the complaint from the individual. But anyway, I'll let you all. Thank you. I mean, I think that's what we were actually saying last month, if I'm recalling correctly, is, is our concern was not so much that we were instructing the complainants to amend their complaint to add the additional um, violation allegations, but um, that we were advising the commission that we did not think the commission could proceed to find violations of um, uh, 1254070A9 against the company when that was not noticed at the last meeting. That, that's the way I recall that, and that's why that ordinance was placed in the revised complaint. But I'm not trying to revisit it. I, I think the proposal, or the not proposal, but the conclusion you've reached, I think will bring a lot of clarity to these things in the future. All right, just so the record's clear, the commission, we, we, um, there was a motion which was seconded, and um, the commission has dismissed the complaints brought by Deborah Cox against Southern Comfort. Um, that's the way I've now read the complaints. Uh, it's the way I interpret the complaints now, having heard from counsel for uh, Deborah Cox as well as uh, Southern Comfort, and um, we'll move on to the next next complaint. We've got um, the next item is a complaint from Tina Doherty against M American Melody Carriages in Charlotte Clawson. Is that another one that needs to be deferred one those, month? Those were the two that um, that Mr. Highland asked okay. that we defer until he can deal with his family okay. issues. And I think we need a motion on that deferral as well. It, it's just the one from it's the third item, the, yes. The third and the second to last, or just the third? Yeah, there's actually the, the first, the third, third, and also. last. Wait, the third, oh, you the can first. go ahead and Okay, I'll make a motion to defer the complaint by Tina Doherty against American Melody Carriages and Charlotte Clawson till the next meeting be based upon Mr. Highland's unavailability today. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, we also have a complaint from Lori Lancaster against Jesse Monville, and I understand from Mr. Blackburn that's been withdrawn. Yes. All right. Uh, next, um, and... I don't want to uh, misstate anything. I, I may have said that 
it was my understanding that Paul Morrison's complaint against Sugar Creek had also been withdrawn. Is that correct or incorrect? Yes, it was withdrawn was late filed. Okay. Well, may, may I make this clear? It was, uh, we, uh, I corresponded with Mr. Fields and asked that the commission dismiss that complaint because it failed to state any, any violation. It had uh, no specificity whatever, didn't mention any drivers or any conduct. And then I was notified that it was removed from the mm -hmm. agenda, and I don't think there's anything in this minute that will say why. <laughs> but I did write the letter. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I, I think that's probably moot since Ms. Rogers is representing that it's, she's withdrawing the complaint to Um, we also have a complaint from Samantha Walsh against American Melody Carriages. Is this another, this is another one that needs to be deferred one month? Mm -hmm. uh, can we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. And um, that leaves us with complaints from Kama Zuniga against Cumberland Carriages, Southern Comfort Carriages, American Melody Carriages. Before we start, uh, American Melody Carriages. Yes. We, you, that one would also be one. The, the one against American Melody that Miss Warren has brought would need to be deferred <coughs> until next month. For and, and but the other parts of it would, I'm assuming, she wants to proceed with. Except for Jesse Monville. Jesse Monville needs to be removed. Right. You see. I had seen a doctor that there was a rehearing of that one against Sugar, from, against Southern Comfort. That's, that's, you know, de that's deferred, because it's American deferred? Melody. It oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, so you're, Ms. Zuniga, you're withdrawing your complaint against Jesse Monville? Yes, sir. Okay, and um, we've had a request to defer your complaint against American Melody Carriages uh, for one month. For your request. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So can we have a motion to defer American Melody, uh, the complaint against American Melody carriages? So oh. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. All right. So just so um, Mr. Blackburn, you're aware, Mr. McNally has to leave at 3.30 sharp today, so we're about to lose our quorum. So we have eight minutes to address the complaints by Ms. Z Zuniga. Do you want to wait till next month, or no. do you want to start? Hold on. I want to run that. I want to run Eight minutes is not very long. I could do it. I could do it in three. All right. Who's this again? Southern Comfort. Uh, there's one here that um, only one of these. Uh, this can be done very quickly. It has to do with Southern Comfort and Mr. Bassett and all this pertains to is uh, defective equipment, a hole in the floorboard of the carriage. We just show them uh, the the, video? just the floorboard part. we got a very short, short yeah. window here. In February, this uh, was noticed. It's gone on continually all the way to, I don't know how this carriage passed, uh, inspection to be, to be out of the um, On the road, and it is still out on the road with a hole in it is a big safety concern with the floorboard of the driver's box. Is that still true today? Yes, it is. As of um, October, there's the hole right here. Um, as of October 9th, it is still operating with the hole in the floor. Is this video was taken in June. I don't know how it passed the inspection with a hole in it. It wasn't present when I inspected them personally. There you can see it. It's larger than it appeared on that other. <clears throat> can you just take it back and just freeze that one because that shows it. May I make a recommendation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, we, I, I'm, I'm aware of a lot of the carriages that Mr. Morrison has. 
why don't we order it out of, out of the service until I inspect it a second time. I'll also carry both inspectors with me. We'll all three inspect it. And that way that resolves the issue of whether it continues to operate. Now, the other issue is different, but that part. I'm sorry. I'm just well, what I'm going to recommend is we take it out of service, and I can do that as a director without no, this. So, let me be heard, please. What, what I'd like to do is take that one carriage out of service and let me inspect it before we put it back in, if that hole's still there. Well, can I address that? Sure. Okay. I, I'm not trying break? to be difficult. I promise, Mr. Fields. But, um, there's, first of all, there's no public in that area, so it's not. Can I make a specific Can I please no, speak? Let, let Ms. Rogers speak, but. If, if there is a hole there, it needs to be repaired. Well, the reason that they brought this and it's an objection is the driver has, because this has become War of the Worlds, okay, on Broadway. I, I understand. I, I know you do. You probably understand a whole lot better than I do. Um, but we've been putting, he's been putting a camera there so that it, the hole is filled with a camera sitting there so that he can, as he's driving around in the streets, video just like they're videoing everything that's going on in this world which is sad it's sad that we've gotten to this point but where is the public safety issue passengers are not walking there that's on the driver's space i don't think it's big enough for a foot or someone to fall and get hurt that's why he's done it now if you're telling me he can't set it up to put a camera there and video then I guess we'll mount the camera somewhere else and put a patch on the hole, and I can have that done tonight. But there's, that's the reason it's there, and that's what's going on, and it's not a public safety issue. This has got to be, you know, this is almost laughable. Excuse me, last month it was determined that passengers can ride on the passenger box with two complaints with a small child and another passenger on the box. I, I, we don't have a lot of time. That's an obvious violation. A camera being placed there might give one a good view of the rear end of a horse, which somehow is appropriate for all these cases. <laughs> all right. I'm, I think we should follow our director's suggestion. Well, and, and I'm depending on the ordinance itself. If you read 1254-260, uh, uh, D, it says, if on inspection a carriage is found to be unsafe, unclean, or unsightly, the commission director, commission inspector, designated may direct the carriage to be taken out of service with the conditions corrected. If there's not an issue, I can go, I can inspect, I can have an inspector look at it tonight. And if it's, if it's fine, it's fine. I don't want to take him out we'll just to be it. taken out. I mean, we'll fix it tonight. Sure. If you think and, and if. Dangerous, but. Dangerous not the question. I don't see how that's a dangerous And, it's and, and that's the reason we would inspect. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. It's, where's this camera in this picture? Yeah, where's the camera? Oh, wait. Uh, here, wait. I have October. Hey, we, I think we're, we've heard enough from everyone. We're going to deliberate now. Mr. Fields, I understand you can pull a carriage on your own volition right. and, and you can get someone out there as we, soon as they tell you it's fixed. We you can, we can get inspected to tonight. And you need no action from I us. I need no action from the commission, and that'll resolve this particular one. Thank you. In fact, one of the things I'd like to talk uh, would we I think there are a lot of things that staff and director can take action on. We may begin just taking the action rather than bring it to the commission and resolve it at that level. Then they can certainly appeal. But I'll, I'll get it inspected the time. No if that, we'll have it inspected. All right, well, that gets us to right at 329. Uh, Mr. McNally needs to leave, so uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? Can we, mm -hmm. do we need to move to defer the Cumberland carriage one to next month? If we haven't done that already, let's go ahead and do that. Why have we not? Which one was the... Okay, what, right, what I'm showing, let me, yeah. what I'm showing at this point that the commission has not deferred, is still setting with action, would be a uh, complaint that was filed in, uh, by Mrs. Zuniga uh, regarding a, uh, a horse that is not in good condition from Cumberland Carriage, uh, a complaint by Mrs. Zuniga, as well as Ms. Doherty about... Uh, against Cumberland Carriages about not having rear lights, complaint from Miss 
Zuniga regarding a ho underway horse at Southern Comfort. Her other that was withdrawn. Uh, another complaint of from uh, Miss Zuniga against Southern Comfort and Jesse B about a horse underweight. That those are that's what I have other than the ones that you've deferred. I would move to defer. I, you name four. Could, could I ask? Yep. Since I, I mean, these are outside staff complaints. Are those the complaints that you believe have not been heard? The three that have not been heard are the ones against Cumberland Carriage for the horse with the uh, limping issue. Um, the one against Cumberland Carriages for operating without the proper lighting. Okay. And one against Southern Comfort for a horse that's operating that with underweight. Okay, I'm all right. Maybe this is the. I'm sorry, this was a double of the same one. Those would be three. I'm sorry. I would move to defer the three referenced uh, complaints, two against Cumberland Carriage and the one remaining against Southern Carriages to be deferred one month. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Move to adjourn. Wait, I'm Is there a second? Second to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. No, they didn't. the one motion one vote pass. We knew you had to have a second. It, had to be it can't be debated, but it has to be said. <laughs>